This is a very special day for us all here at the Kennedy Library. It's a day when we can commemorate President Kennedy's legacy of public service through the powerful examples of Zainab Salbi and Jay Williams, our two New Frontier Award winners who I think will show what it is to stand in 2007 on the edge of a new frontier and what a new generation of leaders can accomplish and can inspire all the rest of us to accomplish. Uh, it's also a special day here at the Kennedy Library because we're honored by the presence of our own leadership at the Kennedy Library. Uh, Caroline Kennedy, our wonderful president who's been working tirelessly here all day through various events that we're engaging with her. Paul Kirk, our chairman, who's right over here. And many of our directors of the Kennedy Library have had a meeting this morning, and I especially want to welcome another member of the Kennedy family, Patricia uh, Kennedy Lawford's daughter, Sydney Lawford McKelvey, who's with us having her first board meeting. And I want to welcome the leadership of our sister institution uh, from way over there in Cambridge, the Kennedy School's Institute of Politics, and to say how pleased we are here at the Kennedy Library to co-sponsor the New Frontier Awards with the Institute of Politics. And in a moment, you'll hear from the Institute's distinguished director, former Iowa Congressman Jim Leach, who co-chairs the New Frontier Awards Committee with me. And I also want to acknowledge the IOP's wonderful staff Kathy McLaughlin, Christian Flynn, and Camden Vilkin, who are all here with us today. So let's uh, welcome them. And here at the Kennedy Library Foundation, we're very fortunate to have an outstanding director of all of our awards programs, Ann Aaron. And I want to thank Ann and her research assistant, Jess Messer, for all they've done to prepare us for today. Ann and Jess. And I, I want to thank the members of the New Frontier Awards Committee who are here. Um, I think they're all here. Randy Cooper, Dan Fenn, Carol Fulp, Vivian Lee, and Barbara Suliotis. Everyone will see in just a few moments that you have superb collective judgment. So thank you all. And it's a pleasure to welcome the family of Mayor Williams, uh, the mayor's wife, Sonia, his mother, Mary Williams, and his aunt, Evelyn Harden, who've come here from Youngstown, Ohio, and welcome to each of you. And I also want to welcome Zainab Salbi's cousin, Lamis Hassan, who's here with us today. Thank you so much for coming. <clears throat> And finally, let me say how pleased we are to be joined by a very large group of volunteers who every day lead a life of public service in the spirit of President Kennedy, especially the core members of City Year. You could recognize them in their red jackets all over the room. Congratulations. Now, there were many, many moments during the presidency of John F. Kennedy when he called on his fellow Americans to serve their country and the world. One of my favorites is his commencement speech at Vanderbilt University in May of 1963 when he reminded students that, and I quote, the citizen has an obligation to serve the public. You will find the pressures greater than the pay sure that our two award winners could certainly agree with that. You may endure more public attacks than support, but you will have the unequaled satisfaction of knowing that your character and talent are contributing to the direction and success of a free society. This is what Kennedy, President Kennedy's New Frontier was all about. It was about tackling public problems, great and small, and working to solve them for the public good. And the spirit of the New Frontier Awards was first captured by President Kennedy before he was president in his speech 
at the Democratic National Convention in Los Angeles on July 15, 1960, when he accepted his party's nomination for the presidency. Let's watch a two-minute clip from that speech. For I, I stand here tonight facing west on what was once the last frontier. From the lands that stretch 3,000 miles behind us, the pioneers gave up their safety, their comfort, and sometimes their lives to build our new west. They were not the captives of their own doubts, nor the prisoners of their own price tags. They were determined to make the new world strong and free, an example to the world, to overcome its hazards and its hardships, to conquer the enemies that threatened from within and out. Some would say that those struggles are all over, that all the horizons have been explored, that all the battles have been won, that there is no longer an American frontier. But I trust that no one in this intersection would agree with that sentiment. For the problems are not all solved, and the battles are not all won. And we stand today on the edge of a new frontier, the frontier of the 1960s, the frontier of unknown opportunities and perils, the frontier of unfilled hopes and unfilled threats. Woodrow Wilson's new freedom promised our nation a new political and economic framework. Franklin Roosevelt's New Deal promised security and succor to those in need. But the new frontier of which I speak is not a set of promises. It is a set of challenges. It sums up not what I intend to offer to the American people, but what I intend to ask of them. It appeals to their pride. It appeals to our pride, not our security. It holds out the promise of more sacrifice instead of more security. The new frontier is here whether we seek it or not. Beyond that frontier are uncharted areas of science and space, unsolved problems of peace and war, unconquered province of ignorance and prejudice, unanswered questions of poverty and surplus. It would be easier to shrink from that new frontier, to look to the safe mediocrity of the past, to be loud by good intentions, and high rhetoric, and those who prefer that course should not vote for me or the Democratic Party. But I believe that the times require imagination and courage and perseverance. I'm asking each of you to be pioneers towards that new frontier. So those are the words that first inspired a whole generation, new generation, to follow John F. Kennedy into this uncharted territory that he spoke about, the new frontier. And many of us, and some of us in this room are in that category, I certainly am, uh, grew up um, during his presidency. We were too young to work for him, but we certainly weren't too young to answer his call and to follow that call that he made in that speech. And one of those who answered was Eli Siegel. Eli helped launch these awards as a member of the New Frontier Awards Committee four years ago. And when we lost Eli in 2006, we lost one of the great champions of public service in America, the kind of person about whom President Kennedy was speaking. Eli was the founder and creator of President Clinton's AmeriCorps, the new domestic peace corps that has sent more than 400,000 volunteers into, like our wonderful friends here at City Year, onto the front lines of public service in education, in health, the environment, and many other areas where the needs are urgent and the challenges are great. And Eli was an ins inspiration to all of us. He knew how important it was to link 
the public and private sectors to bring together political leaders and community leaders and to serve the common good by uns inspiring uncommon deeds. And that's what he did all his life, better than anyone I've known. Because we miss his leadership and his friendship and because his life of service represented all that the New Frontier Awards stand for, we want to pay tribute to Eli's memory here today by showing a short excerpt from a commencement speech he gave at the University of Michigan Law School in 1993. And you'll hear him urging the graduates, as President Kennedy had done many years earlier at Vanderbilt, to commit themselves to careers in public service. And as we show Eli's message, I want to thank my good friend and great member of the Kennedy Library Foundation Board, Phyllis Siegel, Eli's widow, who is here with us today. Thank you, Phyllis. Our dreams. But I think there is a way of letting the best part of those dreams live on, whatever you're doing. It cannot be in the pleasure, however, of simply outdistancing your neighbor. If you find your glory in exceeding the achievements of others and you succeed, you'll find out that it is indeed lonely at the top. And if you fail, you'll have spent a lifetime looking up the ladder, focusing only at those above you. But your dreams are within reach if you're ready to conceive of your success in terms of service to others. When President Clinton calls us to service, he likes to quote Martin Luther King, who said once, everyone can be great because everyone can serve. These words do not mean simply that the seeds of greatness are within each one of us as individuals. Of course, that is the truth. They also mean that greatness through service is not a scarce commodity, that great people, unlike great basketball players and certainly great law students, are not measured by the distance between themselves and ordinary people. Great people are measured by the lack of distance between themselves and others. I wish you rich lives, not merely rich lifestyles. I urge you to look elsewhere. I urge you for greatness in service. So the New Frontier Awards are a wonderful bridge between two worlds that are often divided today. Just as Eli Siegel urged community leaders to work with political leaders, these awards bridge the gap between community service and elective politics, between the many young people who say they want to serve but don't want to vote, and the few who say they want to serve by running for office. Every year we strengthen this bridge by recognizing two young Americans under 40 who are committed to public service, one a community builder and leader, and the other an elective political office holder, both of whom demonstrate the kind of pragmatism vision and tenacity in addressing public challenges that John F. Kennedy admired and represented. The New Frontier Awards have also created another bridge, uh, a bridge between the Kennedy Library and the Institute of Politics, the two great institutions that were created to perpetuate the legacy of President Kennedy, but have led quite separate institutional lives until now. And having built this wonderful new bridge, Together, it's now my great pleasure to welcome my partner in this new frontier enterprise, the distinguished director of the Institute of Politics, who had a long and productive and courageous career in the U.S. House of Representatives before coming to Boston earlier this fall, my colleague Jim Leach. Jim? Well, thank you very much, John. Uh, you've been a tremendous leader of the library and a great friend of the Institute of Politics. Uh, I just saw, John, uh, the other day uh, uh, a clip of a speech that uh, Bill Clinton gave <clears throat> to the 1996 Democratic Convention. and On approximately 18 occasions, he used the phrase, bridge to the 21st century. And so bridge is an analogy that works well, and, and the theme of this particular presentation on this particular speech was that people don't remember anything unless it's repeated. 
Uh, and so I want to say we do have a wonderful bridge between our organizations. And in many ways, uh, uh, if you think about our award winners, one is a bridge between cultures, uh, where war and its ramifications uh, are at issue. The other is a bridge between generations, where growth or lack thereof of a great American city is uh, the agenda. Uh, and it's in this context that, that uh, I'm privileged to uh, introduce the bridge between our two organizations, a common member of our, both of our boards, uh, Carolyn Kennedy. Um, and uh, as an advocate of her father's legacy of uh, inspiring young people into public service, uh, Carolyn has been one of the strongest uh, voices for creation of this board. Indeed, uh, some consider Carolyn the impetus for this award. Uh, Carolyn's an attorney, an author, an editor, uh, and as her surrogate literary agent, uh, let me note that her newest book, A Family Christmas, is available for purchase in the library, in the lobby, uh, and Carolyn has agreed to uh, sign copies uh, right after lunch uh, in the pavilion just down the stairs. Uh, and in any regard, uh, I hope you will uh, uh, please welcome uh, uh, Carolyn Kennedy, uh, uh, who proves that... Uh, uh, there's something in greatness, uh, and one of those things in greatness is good genes. Thank you. Thank you, Jim, and thank you all for coming today. This is really uh, such a, an exciting occasion for the library to, to host all of you um, and to work so closely with the Institute of Politics. Um, and so now it's time uh, for me to uh, really lead the celebration and honor two young Americans whose commitment to public service really is an inspiration to us all. The New Frontier Awards have special meaning uh, for our family, and I know uh, my father would feel the same way. Pub President Kennedy believed that public service politics was a noble profession, and he hoped that young people would achieve their dreams by meeting and solving public challenges. Zainab Salbi and Jay Williams capture President Kennedy's vision of civic commitment and reinterpret it for our time, reminding us that we are never too young or too old to make a difference. Zainab Salbi transformed her experience in a war-torn society into a beacon of hope for thousands of women who are struggling to survive and put their worlds back together. Jay Williams could have put his talents to work in any city, but he chose to stay and serve in Youngstown, and he is transforming it into a place where all its citizens can have a brighter future. Together, Jay and Zainab embody the spirit of the new frontier. They bring passion, hard work, and unwavering commitment to the task of building a new and better world. They are role models not just for young Americans, but for all Americans. Zainab Salvi knows the devastation of war firsthand. Growing up in Baghdad during the Iran-Iraq War, she saw conflict tear families apart and destroy lives. But instead of giving in, she transformed her experience into a visionary and effective organization that recognizes the power of human relationships to rebuild entire societies. Women for Women International offers hope and unflinching support to women who have been tortured, degraded, and traumatized by war, isolated and forgotten by the world. Recognizing that strong societies need strong women, she has given more than 150,000 women from Bosnia to Colombia, from Rwanda to Afghanistan and Iraq, the educational and financial tools, and the emotional support and resources to reclaim hope for themselves and their children. In the process, she is building a global sisterhood that can sustain and empower tomorrow's peacemakers. I am pleased to present Zainab Salbi with the 2007 John F. Kennedy New Frontier Award. Thank you very much. 
Thank you very much. What an honor um, to receive this award from you, and an award in the name of a great uh, person who inspired not only Americans, but inspired a lot of us who were overseas at the time and, and watched and were inspired throughout his, uh, our upbringing and by his words and his vision. Um, it's a great honor to be in your company as well. I'm very grateful for the friends and families who are here, Nancy Rubin, Carla Ryan, uh, friends and families from Iraq, and uh, the Hunt Alternative Friends, and City Year Group, you rock. Um, you inspire me for the energy you have. Um, and um, as I said, growing up in Iraq, I actually never thought ever that I would receive an award under the name of John F. Kennedy. That's a big deal for me. And as a naturalized citizen, um, it's a bigger deal <laughs> uh, to receive such an acknowledgement and an award. Um, and it stands for the greatness of this country, I think, in many ways. Um, the welcoming of all of its citizens with our diversities um, and the freedom that this country provides. Because had I not been here, I would not, I don't know if I would be able to fulfill my own potential and freedom that is so important that we preserve and we cherish and value and for those of us who immigrated here it's a very very important part of America and what it stands for particularly in this era of war um, we discuss wars a lot um, in our newspapers and in our discussions of wars um, from a frontline discussion from the fighting and the troops and the weapons and the bullets and all of that and as someone who both uh, grew up in war and works with women survivors of wars I really see war as two sides of the same coin one is the frontline discussion but one is the backline discussion and that is led by women who keep life going who keep the children going to school, who keep the music playing, who keep the food going at the table, um, and, and the acts of resistance in different ways, but they are not through fighting. They are through keeping life going. And we need to understand war from that perspective, from a woman's perspective of how do we preserve life and how do we keep it going. I was um, recently in Sudan. And I asked uh, a woman, what does peace mean for her? Because we need to understand not only war from a backline discussion, we need to understand what peace means from a backline discussion. Not only, because this peace is not the signing of a peace agreement only, it is what it means for individual lives, for the citizen's life. So this woman was walking for 18 years of her life during the war in southern Sudan. In these 18 years, she never slept more than one, five nights in one place because she was kidnapped by the rebels a few times and she was, uh, she was made a, a slave by the rebels, carried their ammunition, was raped frequently by them. And so when I asked her what does peace mean for her, she stayed silent for a second and said, peace means I have toenails. Because in these 18 years, she did not have toenails, 18 years of walking. Um, and for the first time in her life, she has toenails because she's been staying in one place for a year and a half. We need to understand peace from the toenails perspective, especially those of us who have pedicure and manicure between now and then. We need to understand peace from the intimate perspective, and that's what Women for Women International tries to do. We have an appeal for every single woman in America and all over the world to sponsor one woman survivor of war at a time by sending her $27 a month along with a letter to establish communication link between the two women. We call it our own form of public diplomacy, of women taking ownership of our own voices and resources and saying, I am reaching out to a sister in Afghanistan or Rwanda or DRC Congo, and I am helping her standing on her feet. And the prayers that we get from the sponsored women for their American sisters, uh, one woman said, I pray for her every single day because she is saving my life. One woman said, there is so much love in America, they even have that access love beyond their dogs and cats, they give it to us. That's how we build bridges of peace, is by addressing the tangible, by enabling people to go through an intensive training program in our case, where they regroup, we group women, 20 women at a time, and go through intensive communities of women where they learn about women's rights and vocational skills so they can get a job at the end of the year. So it helps, it's a group that helps women move from victims to survivors to active citizens. This group, started it 14, 14 years ago with nothing, nada, nishta, rian, wala, eshi. Um, and as you said, 
14 years later, we have reached out to 150,000 women, distributed $39 million, um, and have more than 90,000 American women and women from 52 other countries being part of this experience. Do I believe every individual can make a difference? Absolutely yes. Do I believe there is hope in this world and there is beauty in this world? Absolutely yes, yes, yes. If I, as an immigrant, could do this, every one of us could do it. Um, and, and that is in the spirit of John F. Kennedy, um, of what we can give to the world and not only to um, our immediate surroundings, but to the world. And the world needs us, I think, more than any other time before. I'm a big uh, fan of Rumi, and Rumi is a 13th century Sufi poet. And one of my favorite, favorite poems by him, he says, out beyond the worlds of right doings and wrong doings, there is a field, I will meet you there. When the soul lies down in that grass, the world is too full to talk about. Ideas, language, even the phrase each other no longer makes any sense. I humbly add that in today's world, out beyond the worlds of war and peace, there is a field and many women and men are meeting there. If you're not there, join us. But I think most of you are there today. And what an honor to be with you in the field. Thank you. I'm pleased now to present Mayor Jay Williams with the new Frontier Award for Elective Public Service. This award is also called the Fenn Award in honor of Dan Fenn, who worked in my father's administration and was the first director of the Kennedy Presidential Library. Dan Fenn is here with us today, and I'd like to ask him to stand for a moment and be recognized. Jay Williams is demonstrating the power and impact of elective public service through his innovative work as the mayor of Youngstown, Ohio. Instead of a career in banking, he is bringing new hope and cutting edge public policy to a city long beleaguered by economic hardship. From the closing of the steel mills in the 1970s that created the city's cultural and civic prosperity to the current subprime mortgage crisis, Changes in the U.S. economy have hit Youngstown particularly hard. Mayor Williams has won praise from fans and skeptics alike for speaking hard truths about the challenges and for his willingness to make the difficult decisions in order to secure a better future. He is making a difference in the lives of tens of thousands of Americans, and his leadership and vision are reaching far beyond Youngstown city line. I'm delighted to ask Mayor Jay Williams to come and accept the 2007 New Frontier Award. Good afternoon. Thank you. I'd like to thank Mrs. Carolyn Kennedy Congressman Leach, Ambassador Shattuck, and all the members of the New Frontier Award Committee for honoring me with this prestigious award. I would certainly be remiss not to thank those who have had the most profound influence on my life, beginning with my parents and other members of my family who have joined me here today, along, of course, with my wife. I must also acknowledge my pastor and so many others who have proven themselves to be lifelong mentors to me. I recognize very quickly in my term that mayors, like many others, are often shouldered with too much blame, but also too much credit. Therefore, I graciously accept this honor on behalf of the countless others who are doing the work that the New Frontier Award embodies, those who often go unseen and unheard, however, without whose work, I would have no platform on which to stand here today and be recognized. From a young child, it was instilled in me that serving others is not to be viewed as a burden, but something to which we should all aspire. It is a concept that was unquestionably reflected in the life and values of President John F. Kennedy, and 44 years after his death remains an ever-present force in the Kennedy family today. 
President Kennedy reminded us that public office is not to be endeavored for fame or fortune. Civic mindedness, vision, pragmatism, and tenacity, these were qualities that the president knew were necessary to identify and address the public challenges of his generation. And as reflected in the young people from Cityscape, they remain the very same qualities that will be needed to address the public policy issues of our generation. While I am humbled and eternally grateful for this award, I must acknowledge that I accept it with a modicum of trepidation. I do so because I remain extraordinarily cognizant of the problems and challenges that the city of Youngstown yet faces. I wish to leave no room for cynics or critics to interpret this, interpret this occasion as a dismissal of the significant work that is yet to be done in the city of Youngstown and in cities across this country. But I also will interpret this word as a sign of progress. There are times in public service where you're left to wonder if your work or the work of others is making a difference. There are times when you're left to wonder if the sacrifices of public service are truly worth it. I will allow this award to answer those questions for me. It will say to me as a public servant, it will say to all true public servants, not necessarily a job well done, but rather a job that must be continued, pressing toward the new frontiers of which President Kennedy so passionately evoked. I also hope that this award will serve as a source of inspiration, hope and optimism, not only to the people and the citizens of Youngstown, Ohio, but to people across this great nation about the power and the importance of civic participation in overcoming deeply rooted civic problems that so often breed cynicism, criticism, hopelessness, and despair. In closing, I am deeply honored to have been considered for this recognition by all the members of the John F. Kennedy Library Foundation. And this award has special context. This award has special context to me. For it was two years ago this month, after having been elected mayor of the city of Youngstown, I found myself wondering, as many newly elected officials, what now? There was a wave of high expectations that had carried over from the campaign. I found myself trying to figure out how to balance those great expectations with the grim realities and daunting tasks that a city would face together as we look to be rebuild a struggling community. As we prepared for the pomp and circumstance of the inaugural festivities, I wrestled with what I would say as we began this new journey, one that would be fraught with problems, pitfalls, and heartbreaks. Sure, I knew there would be successes, but they would be too few and far between. It was a chance visit to this very library in November of 2005 that I found the answers to these questions. The answer was spoken by President John F. Kennedy as he addressed the challenges waiting on the horizon of the new frontier he spoke about during his inauguration in 1961. It, were his, it was his words that provided me with both solace and inspiration. It was his words that I shared with my very own community. President Kennedy admonished us to recognize that as we seek to tackle the problems and challenges of every generation and every new frontier, that all of this will not be finished in the first 100 days, nor will it be finished in the first 1,000 days, nor in the life of this administration, nor perhaps in our lifetime on this planet. But the President admonished us to let us begin. Thank you very much. Well, it's, it's, uh, we've entered the new frontier, and I think we should all be very hopeful based on what we just heard. Zainab, Jay, thank you so much. It's uh, just uh, such inspiring words and such inspiring examples you've given us, and I, I think we're all proud to be part of your extended family here at the Kennedy Library. Um, I want to invite you both to come back up along with Caroline for the famous photo op, which uh, we need to have yet a few more photographs. If we could have you come back up on stage. Um, and I want to give everyone a chance to uh, congratulate you again as you arrive on stage and our photographers at the ready. So uh, please come back if you could just assemble right here. That would be great. <laughs> Sorry.
And now we invite you all to just continue the conversation. Meet uh, Zainab and Mayor Williams. Uh, and here we are at the Kennedy Library. Caroline, I know you have much more work to do before the miles to go before you sleep. But there, Caroline is, is selling books, so there's that opportunity too. Thank you so much. <laughs>